And look, we spent a lot of time as a show, as a network, the morning show, the bottom line, everybody talking about this whole Cade Cunningham, Jalen Green phenomenon. And Jalen Green is turning into a WWE heel. As uh, a Yahoo Sports exclusive came out, uh, Chris Haynes actually had the story with Jalen Green. And Jalen made some news, especially here around these parts, where essentially Jalen Green said that he's happy he didn't end up in Detroit. I wanted to be the number one pick, but I didn't want to be in Detroit. And, yeah. and, and I want to get this quote exactly right, Joy, because yeah. he said, when I was in the G League bubble, I didn't really have anything to do but stay in the gym. I didn't have any time to get away from myself. The only time I had to get away for myself was in my apartment. That's what it felt like in Detroit. I wouldn't be stepping outside in Detroit. There's not many things you can do in Detroit like that. You're going to stay in the gym and go back to your apartment. Joy, this guy, like this guy is kind of, he is anti Detroit. He, he is, he's a WWE heel, man. Oh, uh, you know what it is? I, I don't understand what he's talking about. He says it's nothing to do in Detroit. I don't, like, it's everything to do in Detroit. It just, if, I think it's, if you're not from here, you just don't know where to go, right? You just don't know where to go, but it's easy. I mean, if you're, if you're playing here, it's not hard to, you know, hop in the uber just go walk around downtown it's you know everything from bars I mean, from bars to lounges to restaurants to shopping to um they even have a thing called folding all right you can go folding you can do top golf you can go to the swing suite at the mgm yeah three casinos three major casinos all in downtown you can go to greek town I mean, it's a lot of places you can go you can go to the heart of the city where they have you know I mean, it's a bunch of stuff you can do. I, I don't know what he's talking about. Like, well, well, my thing about it was like, hey, bro, you're in Houston. I've been to Houston a lot. That, Houston's no great shakes, man. No. Like, Houston is, uh, Houston is is the same as Detroit. And I would argue it's even worse because it's so spread out. But DMac, like this guy, this guy's going full heel. Uh, no, hold, has anybody said, hey, Jalen Green, Darren McCarty, I got four cops. We don't want you in Detroit. Your clown. What it what it what it does to me is it shows even more not only talent wise and you want a leader on the court and off the court and Cade Cunningham. This was the right pick. What he says is what everybody said about Detroit for for the last sixty years. He looked on Google. He, he's never been here. Joint Bell knows I know, I know that Detroit yeah. is a city to be in. And if you don't want to be one of us, it's no. that's an individual mentality. That's a guy out to get his money. That's not a guy that's in it. Detroit versus everybody. We got the right guy. The more that he talks, the more that it assures we, me. Thank good. We got the right. Thank pick. goodness we got Troy Weaver making the call because we got the greatest guy. This and you know what, uh, Neil, just to update you, the greatest heel in professional wrestling right now is a guy by the name of Malcolm Jacob Freeman, MJF. He's an AEW, but this kid will probably he will be a heel for all all time. Follow him on Twitter because he just rakes <laughs> rakes people. But he is on, and I've had the pleasure on my wrestling podcast to interview him. And this is why I, I like him because that's him 99% of the time. But the true character, and I'll bust this, is he's a good dude, right? But he plays the character. But that's what this kid's doing, and he has no idea. This is the immaturity of Jalen Rose versus the maturity of Kate Cunningham, who has a daughter, who is mature, talks team everything we said like i said bottom line nobody wants you jalen green here in detroit so thank you for making that apparent troy weaver thank you for choosing kate cunningham yeah and and it's funny too and and again you know going through the the youtube thread and, and everybody's talking about that exactly exactly what you said in that you know <laughs> and they're, they're really like as, as, well, as you would expect as you would expect well man well, money said he wears Daisy Dukes. <laughs> <laughs> the the, uh, the Jalen Green shorts right now seems to be the topic of discussion, and, and of course, uh, Mister Seven One Five says Jalen Green can't hold Garzilla's jock, and and we'll have more on Luca Garza Nation and and the continued myth of Luke, Luca Garza. I'm, I'm, gonna, later say, on I'm, the show. I'm gonna say this because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say he's not talented. J Jalen Green is a talented athlete, um, but like I want to allude to something he said in his interview. I want the rookie of the year. Now I want a championship. I want I want the rookie of the year. You don't see those or hear those things come out of Kane Cunningham uh, because it's more of a big team, little me uh, mentality, and that's the type of mentality we need here. We don't need a guy that's me, me, me. And you know the the Houston Rockets wanted a 
a stone cold killer when it comes to um, getting the ball in the rim, and that's what they have in the Jalen Green. But a, a guy that's going to help lead them to a championship, that's not what he's portraying right you, now. You know he, what I just thought of? What's up? Mouse of the Palace. We just saw it, watched it. We're putting that behind. So whether Ron Artest or in basketball or who's the most hated guy, you know, like a Claude Lemieux. Well, now you got a Jalen Green to boo. So there you go. Perfect. Because you don't want us getting on your case for dissing us because we'll shove it right back in your behind. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't know the schedule off the top of my head, but when Houston comes to Detroit and to Little Caesars Arena, that, that'll be an entertaining environment to be in. They're, I, yeah. they're releasing the schedule today. They are releasing yeah. the schedule today. So, yeah. Yeah. man, that, yeah. that would be a good, yeah. Uh, yeah. A good Christmas yeah. Day game. Yeah. Right? Ooh, you slide the baby in there. Yeah. I would. Does hey. the NBA work like that? Like as far as like the NFL does with the flex games where they can do it? Would they look at the schedule? Do you think they do like, do you think Adam Silver is about the matchups? Do you think it would be a rookie? Like, cause it always, it's the Lakers on Christmas. It's always used to be the Kobe or Jordan or whatever. Yeah, the Warriors would be on. The, the war, right. But do you think because of the first and second pick that the league or Adam Silver, it'd be inter- like, it's interesting smart, they will. to see if they're, cognizant of all this going on and it plays into it if it were commissioner neil rule yes, yes. It, you're, it's definitely going to be rockets Still pistons got a few, at, you, bro i'm trying to get o'clock. you the broadcasting job we can't <laughs> go to commissioner we got to baby step our way there uh, yeah no i i get that but if i if they're smart they'll do that because you know you, you look at that you look at the ratings that it pulls on christmas day uh certainly that would be something that i think the the nation would tune into because of the one v2 angle and then everybody here you know given the detroit houston thing and what jalen green's become that is certainly something they should do what you got fish fish so, is in the bowl by the way so 3 p.m they're going to announce all televised games so they're just going to do the espn tnt uh abc games for the opening week and then the christmas day games will be out so today at three o'clock we'll find out like Maybe just one game of the Pistons, but we'll see if they put them on Christmas, which I don't think they will. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just don't the think they will. The, they're, the 1030 is probably going to be Nuggets Jazz because they seem to love to put them on. Uh, Eight o'clock will probably be the Lakers because they love to put them on. Uh, they might go Lakers Celtics maybe or um, I, I could or I Lakers could see Bucks. a Pistons Rockets at, at 1230. You know, okay. to, to kick the thing off but, on Christmas Day. But 12 o'clock, they like to put the Knicks on. Yeah, they do, so don't they? So 2.30 or 5 is, is open. Yeah, so there you go. But I, I it'll be interesting to see. I'll, I'll certainly keep an eye uh, on that, and we'll see how that shakes out. But, you know, Joy, you know. You, yeah, I know. The, 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 yeah, the, they, they coming in hot in, in the YouTube comments. <laughs> and uh, I want to allude to kind of what, uh, what D-Max said about you don't want to piss off uh, people here in Detroit. And uh, you look at 313 Locks that – I just don't think that Detroit Pistons fans are people you want to piss off, laugh out loud. I don't think so either. <laughs> I don't yeah, think so, it, it so. is it is pretty humorous. Uh, if you if you're watching on YouTube, look over at that comment section. People are in rare form. Uh, I knew I should count on them. They're coming through. <laughs> they said Big H energy, H for ho. <laughs> <laughs> it's, get, it's getting real. It's in getting there, person. But you know, you know what it was though, because he didn't make it. He made it personal, right? Cause, right. Cause we, he made it personal where he didn't say, I didn't like the Piston organization. He say he didn't like the city of Detroit. Like, you don't Which say those, type, you don't say those type of things, right? You don't say those type of things when you're in a professional sport because you never know what could happen, especially like in the NFL. Like in the NFL, you never know. Like, you never know when you're going to end up. You know, you can, you know, I was in four different, I was in four different cities in one year from Buffalo to to Philly, to Indianapolis, to New Orleans, right? I'm not going to sit here and say I don't like New Orleans. I'm not going to sit here and say I don't like Indianapolis. Even if I don't like the cities, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> right. Like even, you, even, like, even if you really do feel that way, you don't say that. Right, right. And, 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 that's, and that's really the thing. you know. And this is a conversation that we're going to continue because I, this is a good theme that's going on right now. The, the athletes that are you know, sticking their proverbial foot in their mouth. Patrick Beverly's in the news. We're going to touch on that in just a couple of minutes. Yeah. But I do want to continue uh, this whole discussion. So that... <laughs> they say he doesn't put sugar in his grits. They say Jalen Green looks like a guy who doesn't put sugar in his grits. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jalen yeah. Green so, uses women's dove deodorant for his sensitivity. Uh, yeah, so, so we're just... Uh, you know, we're having a couple laughs and things like that. But, but boy, I did, Rye. Yeah. I, I did want to internalize it, though, because, D-Mac, you saw this certainly 
in your career with big time dudes that that came in here that were at the top of their game you saw it with Chris Chelios you saw it with Brett Hall all, all those kinds of guys and, and Joyke you too you know with <laughs> with, with Calvin <laughs> said Jalen Hughes awesome. and Summer Eve <laughs> you guys are on fire I don't right know now. if you got no I, I, we have to take some time to the YouTube. But somebody said that Jalen Green uses Summer Eve. That's hilarious. <laughs> but people don't know what Summer Eve is. Go look up what Summer Eve is. <laughs> but well, of course he is. He's a douche. <laughs> oh god. But, but Mac, you've seen this in Joy. You know, you've been around big time dudes too with with Matt Stafford, Calvin Johnson. But but Mac, I'll, I'll start with you in that you saw a Brett Hall who was at the top of the game come in here and really warm up to the area. You saw Chris Chelios, who who's a hated enemy. Yeah. really warm up to the area what is it about detroit that that takes these guys once you're here you love it it clicked me it clicked into me listening to calvin johnson at his speech it doesn't matter what organization it's the fans it's the people it's the community and you look at a guy like chris chelios and trust me he used to chase him around the ice because he tried to kill sergey you know so we would always me and probably try to kill ronick but the fact that when Shelly comes here, because it's the mentality of the athlete and the person that engulfs himself in the city, he did the same thing in his hometown, Chicago, and he did it here to the same people. That's why he's embraced. Well, the one athlete that can be loved in both Detroit and Chicago. And, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, but it's the people. It's the fans. It's the way you treat it. And it's the guys that know, right? We're a Brad Hall, you mentioned, that comes in to win a championship, but he knows what he has to do. But also, too, the mentality is you're going to go out and you're going to work and you're going to do it. So you give us what we give you back. People sense it. There's no BS. It's all about the you know the effort and stuff like that. So then the talent comes, but it's the fans, it's the pe the people, and it's the communities, right? We, it's the communities that we settle in and are, are accepted as outsiders from day one, and that's why more than not, not just the Red Wings guys, but people that that played in the league and we played against and whatever, still live in this area. There's so many ex NHL guys, and I think it's it's a because of the people. Yeah, and, and Joy too. I mean, Calvin is yeah. one that comes to mind with me. I mean, this is this is a high level Hall of Famer, mm -hmm. hundreds of millions of dollars that he's made during his career. He's here all the time, man. He stay he he's been staying here. Yeah, he's been staying here. Uh, I think it was more so him coming here, starting his career. And there's not too many athletes who can play almost a decade in this league for the same team, same franchise. So over those years, for sure, he grew a, uh, a, a attachment to the city. The fans love him here. Uh, I mean, that's this is the type of guy he's not going to brag. He's not going to boast. Um, and uh, it was kind of funny that that's kind of his mentality. But I remember um, playing with him. Uh, we were playing um, Seattle, and this is when they had Richard Sherman. And uh, this one, Twitter was really big for the athletes. We'll go on Twitter, talk junk. Uh, and so the week we're about to play Seattle, uh, Richard Sherman puts up um, – uh, uh, Optimus Prime as his profile pick because he has the whole Calvin that, that week. And so the, the media goes to Calvin and says, hey, Calvin, did you see Richard Sherman change his profile picture to um, Optimus Prime? And he goes to the he goes to the media. I mean, just with a straight face. I mean, that's his Twitter. I mean, if, if that's <laughs> what he wants to do. I mean, he can do that. I don't. I mean, I, that's his Twitter. I don't know what you want me, want me to say. And that's, a, you know, he doesn't buy into none of that. And and he's he strictly has that Detroit mentality of, I'm not going to do too much talking. Let's just go work. And uh, and that's kind of why the city, is, you know, kind of take uh, kind of took to him. And that's kind of why he took to the city because that's just who he is. And he has that blue collar no matter. And, and it's funny that it's not too often where your highest paid player is, your, is the hardest worker. And I remember we um, have conditioning drills, and he's 100% every single sprint. And with that long stride, it's hard to kind of <laughs> – Stay gotta, with him. You, yeah. It's hard to stay with him, so you got to go 110% to beat him. And so I remember he, his work ethic was so crazy that we have to take turns on somebody had to beat him every time. So, all right, this time you beat him, I'll beat him next time, <laughs> and then you beat him next time. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how hard it – and no, but that's – that's why the city loves him so much because you can see the type of work he's put in by his play, not by what not by what he's saying, but by his play on the field. Tell and me so, once and show me twice, Joink, and I think I can look across this table at you, and you're exactly like me. Is we're gonna tell you, yeah. and then we're gonna back it up. And we're gonna do it. If I yeah. tell you, I'm gonna I'm gonna light you up through that hole right there. You yeah. best be knowing hey. you step through here. 
And nah. I ain't gonna give it to nah, you. No, 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 he's a better man than me because, you know, when we're out there on the field, like, I'm not gonna talk too much, like, on, on social media. I'm not gonna do that. Right. But during the game, yeah. and I'm not, I'm not gonna talk to you first. But if you say something, uh, you say something, then you gotta feel like we got we we gonna have some words and then we gonna talk and then we just gotta we gotta see each other out in the hole or somewhere throughout the game we gonna see each other like but it's just what it was you know and it was fun for me I liked the hackling back and forth a little bit I was always for it yeah I was always I was I was too yeah D Mac was always always (laughs) always but I didn't but you're right Drake I'm not a starter right if you wanted to. If you wanted to let the game sleep and you played nice and you didn't want, you know, we could have that game. But the yeah. minute something pops off, you want to use your mouth or, you know, you're going to take an exception. Cheap well. shot or a cheap shot. Yeah, no, well, yeah. then it's on. Yeah. Then it's on. Yeah. Right? That's why I sat right next to the other team's bench. Right? You could chirp guys on the way off or you can hold accountable. You could set up whatever you wanted or you could ease the tension at a lot of times. You know, mm. when... Like sometimes when the high the the high flying guys are your first or second line guys, they get upset, right? And they start sticking each other or something like that. And you want to quell that down, so you growl at somebody, and everybody looks, and then it might keep some peace in the mm-hmm. game. Other times, boom, crap pops off. And, and speaking of talking, that's that's really an ongoing theme here, especially as we open Big D Energy today, because Patrick Beverly was in the news, and, and I, I want to wrap this around <laughs> to, to these two guys because D Mac D Mac brought this one, one up, and, and he and he wanted. He, Can't be <laughs> that's a good one. Hey, I, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, they said uh, Jalen Green wears lace fronts. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and this is something that's going to continue. Uh, you know, gotta continue. Keep, the, them keep them coming. Keep them coming. As I see him, he's still laughing. smoking sticks just and look seeds. Over. Yeah. Poor guy. <laughs> uh, no, uh, and, and we'll keep that going throughout the show. Every, every now and then, I'll, I'll revisit that, and we'll get it, the good ones that you have. Certainly, I'll, I'll bring up all the Jalen Green comps and everything like that. But but talking is something that that we have seen, and, and Dmac wanted to bring this one up, and, and I think this was very timely. Uh, Patrick Beverly, who, who played for the Clippers. Um, he had that famous quote back in 2019. Uh, Steph Curry, certainly, and the Golden State Warriors were winning championships. And Patrick Beverly's quote was, you know, Steph, you guys had the last five years. The next five years are mine. Patrick Beverly's just been traded to the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, so, you know.